Hi, this is Neary with Sword and Steel, and today's video will be showing you how to get rid of seams or mold lines or join lines, whichever you wish to call them, from miniatures. Now, um, mostly focusing on plastic miniatures is what the video will be on. However, there are going to be some parts that you can indeed use um, on your resin models or your pewter or metal models as well. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so the very first thing that you do while assembling plastic models to get rid of your join lines is to use plastic glue. Plastic glue is so much better for plastic models, but you are going to have to use them for uh, super glue for resin and uh, for metal models, as well as for if you're using any magnetization. So having super glue on your side, getting accustomed to it, also using, grabbing some debonder um, in case you have any accidents would be useful to you. But plastic glue for plastic models is so much better and the reason is that you can get rid of those join lines with nothing else. You could just use plastic glue in most every situation. Take this dragon. This is a Stormcast Eternal dragon given to me by Games Workshop and it is such a beautiful model. My favorite part being that each connection of the separate parts is such that the join lines are hidden under scales or spikes or folds of the wings. The use of plastic glue can completely remove seam lines without any extra effort on your part. First, you dry fit the pieces together to make sure you know exactly how they are supposed to fit when they are attached. This will also tell you whether there is any warp that you might have to deal with. In this dragon, every piece fit together well, but in thicker pieces of plastic or older models, terrain being an example for the thicker parts, there can be a bit of warp. The nice thing about plastic glue is that you can fix that warp by bonding the pieces together with the glue and then binding the pieces together with elastics or some such to keep the pieces in place until they have thoroughly dried together. The plastic glue bond is stronger than the warp. And even if it isn't the first time around, you can just keep applying layers until that warp is gone. Following the dry fitting, you now attach one piece to the other. I like to add the glue to the piece that I'm holding and attach the piece that doesn't have glue onto that held model. When you're fitting the piece together, the plastic glue is less likely to go onto the wrong area of your model, that's all. And then you carefully fit the two pieces together as you knew you could do because you dry fitted it and make certain it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. But after it has dried together, or is at least tacky, you then apply plastic glue over top the join line. This is the part that will actually make that join line disappear. Um, you could apply a thicker layer while you're gluing it together, but that has a tendency to make little bubbles of plastic glue that you have to clean up. You can clean it up, it just takes more plastic glue. But if you do a thin layer of plastic glue for your original seal to make it lightly glued together, that will not only allow you some wiggle room if you happen to make a mistake and need to pull it apart, um, which might happen as you're getting accustomed to it, but also it, you won't get those random bubbles having accidentally used ex an excessive amount of plastic glue. Instead, what you do after it's at least tacky but even dried, you go back and uh, layer on a nice thin plastic glue that will go into the cracks of those seams and make those seams disappear. That is if you don't have any warp, in which case, again, you want to elastic, somehow push those pieces together and perhaps use more plastic glue than I would otherwise suggest for the purposes of it. So the great thing about plastic glue is even if you get those bubbles from using an excessive amount of plastic glue, you just let that dry and carve it away with your hobby knife. If you accidentally drop plastic glue or put too much plastic glue onto your model, if you just let it flow into the cracks and let it dry completely, that plastic that was softened by the plastic glue will reharden and you'll get to try it again. One nice thing about plastic glue that is superior to super glue is that if it gets on your fingers, 
Your fingers don't care. Your fingers do not get stuck together. The plastic glue will only bond plastic glue. It will not bond your knife, which means you can use tools. You can use tools to clean it up. Um, and it will not be sticking to them because it is not super glue. It's plastic glue. It only cares about plastic. So much easier to use. Ah, but what if the divide is simply too big for the plastic glue to help out in? Which certainly can be the case where it's supposed to be a flowing piece of fabric or a flowing piece of metal or something like that. Something that's supposed to be perfectly flowing and has no good reason to have a line going through it for older plastic models or models not up to the same quality that our, our current Games Workshop model is at. What about when you have already gotten your miniature primed or painted? What are you gonna do then? You have to go on to the next step, which also helps with metal and resin models. Well, there's more than one cure. You can use green stuff. Definitely, particularly for anything that is enormous that you basically have to sculpt to improve. Um, but it does take time. Green stuff takes time to use. You need to mix it. You want to mix it in the right ratio. Generally speaking, you can do 50-50, but there are some cases where you may want to use more yellow to blue if you think it's going to take you a significant amount of time to get your sculpt right. And in truth, once you start using green stuff, I use not a bad thing, but it is it is a whole new branch of modeling. So if you don't want to get into a whole new branch of modeling, because once you start realizing that world is out there, once you've opened your eyes to the sculpting, believe me, that's gonna add to your pile of shame. If you're prepared for that, go forth in green stuff. I know I do. But if speed is what you are looking for, then green stuff is necessarily what you want to go with. There is a quicker method, which I'm going to be showing you now. And that is plastic putty. Plastic putty is like grout and also therefore like glue as you would expect a grout to work. It is made of marble dust and an acrylic and it works really well for all sorts of situations. Um, the most common thing that I use it for is just filling in cracks. As you can see here, this is the quickest method for filling in cracks after you've primed the miniature. You can go ahead and paint directly on your um, plastic putty once it is dried, but you can also prime over top of it. It's the, it's the primer, of course, fixed the plastic putty just fine. And then if you're dealing with dark primers instead of pale primer that I'm using, you won't have to worry about different colors. So all you do is you put one layer of primer on, check to see if you've missed anything, and fix it up with the plastic putty, and then keep priming after that. Uh, because priming a model is the quickest way to determine whether you've missed anything. I'm not certain what it is about priming, but boy does it stick out like a sore thumb when you thought you had smoothed it down or you thought those molds lines were gone and they are not once the primer hits that model. And as you can see, all I used was plastic putty mixed with a little flow improver and I'm putting it directly into the cracks and it is disappearing. You can smooth it out, but that's why I chose flow improver over water. You can use water, but I just find that the flow improver helps to smooth it out without much effort on your part. Now, it's a bit different once you have to use it in a flowing flat surface. That makes it a bit more difficult. It really is best in these cracks and crevices that have a bunch of different edges. That's where it shines, but you can use it on things like these horrifying cloaks that I don't know why they would do it, why they would make mold lines right in the cloaks. It is such a pet peeve of mine. I don't like mold lines and cloaks. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. But here it is. You can do it the same way as you uh, did with the other one. You apply it, but you have to be a more, bit more careful because any little bit of putty that you don't have smoothly laid out 
um, is going to show up when you prime it. Now you can prime it, see if you did a good job. And if you did not, after that, you can also add the Games Workshop varnish, um, technical storm shield right over top allow it to dry. I did not allow it to dry. I was too in much in a rush. I apologize. But if you allow it to dry, it will um, smooth out uh, the, uh, any of the fine dusting that you might have missed with the plastic putty. But it can be done. And then you put on the primer and you put on your coloring after that. It, it will be close to perfect. Green stuff can also do this, but it's just harder to work with, um, particularly for something that is so fragile. However, if you take enough time, be very patient with it and do putty layer upon layer followed with storm shield that you have allowed to dry, it will be a flawless seam. You won't see anything. It will be gorgeous. The putty itself actually dries quite quickly. It's the storm shield over top that dries more slowly. And then you just let the miniature sit and dry. Remember, curing with a primer should be a week or minimum 48 hours before you start applying any paint to it. You absolutely can apply more paint to it more quickly than that, but it is your fault if the paint tries to come off if you accidentally, I don't know, flick a nail on it or something. Generally speaking, the plastic putty is all that you need. Well, actually, for the most part, you only, used, only need to use um, plastic glue. But then you can use plastic putty or if you're using um, models that are not plastic and you use plastic putty and it goes into the cracks and it disappears. Green stuff with big old honking holes. Plastic putty for little seam lines. Okay, that's it. Bye. Thank you patrons and PayPal tippers. If anyone had any questions about a problem that they were trying to solve when it came to mold lines. You should let me know in the comments below so we can figure it out.